service, please. This is suite 44. Ole, where is Mr. Lyme's lunch? It was supposed to have been here at precisely one o'clock. Thank you. Ole. What's the ole for, Brad? I have no idea, Mr. Lyme, but it's the only Spanish I know, and it seems to get results. Don't you want any lunch? No, thank you. After last night, I have no appetite, whatever. I don't know why not. You thought the pickled baby octopus was delicious. Until you told me what it was. Really, Mr. Lyme, there's a picture of you and a news item in Spanish. What does it say? Just that Senor Harry Lyme, who is a businessman, arrived in Madrid two days ago to confer with the directors of various Spanish firms in which he has interests. Fair enough? I don't like it, Mr. Lyme. Why not? Because nearly every time the news of your arrival in a foreign city appears in the press, something terrible happens to you. I wouldn't worry about anything happening in Madrid, Brad. Mr. Lyme, there's someone just outside the door. Over there. Olé. that something is going on in one of our companies that I should know about. If I wish to know about it, to come alone and at once. Come where, Mr. Lyme? To the Villa Joselito near Garanta. I wouldn't go, Mr. Lyme. I'll see you later, Brad. What about your lunch? Well, you eat it. It's delicious. Well, it looks very tasty. Don't worry, it's not octopus. Where's Garanta, Mr. Lyme? It's about 20 miles out of Madrid. I'll see you in an hour, Brad. Very well. Mr. Lyme, what is this? Stop, Squid. <laughs> For this, I need white roses. There are only yellow in the house. Please. I know it's a walk, but only a little one. He's coming. Senor. Buenos Aires. I'm Harry Lyme. Harry Lyme? Won't you come in? Can I help you, senor? Aren't you the person who asked me to come here? Come here? No. Well, this is the Villa Joselito, isn't it? Yes. Well, whose house is this? This is the house of Senor Curo Garcia. Oh, could I see him, please? He's not here, senor. Well, where is he? He's in Barcelona. Well, someone slipped a note under my hotel door a little while ago saying that if I came here, I'd learn something about one of my companies. Under your door? Oh, that's most peculiar. Was the note signed? No. May I see it? Would you like a drink? A whiskey, senor, or a little sherry, perhaps? No, nothing, thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Senor Garcia caught an early train this morning. I saw him off. So he couldn't have slipped it under your door. Are you his daughter? No, senor. My name is Consuela Ronda. 
I'm his secretary. Oh, perhaps his wife sent for me. He has no wife. What does Senor Garcia do? Do? Oh, business. So little, senor. He is retired. But he retired with the secretary, so there must be business interests you know of. For those interests, he has another secretary, Senor Juan Ortega, but I know nothing of them. Well, could I see him, please, Juan Ortega? He went to Barcelona with Senor Garcia. Then you're alone here. Except for the gardener. Wait. We can see if the typing was done here. If you could type yourself, Senor, I am not so clever. Ah, son bonitas, son muy bonitas. Muchas gracias. No? No. Then, senor, there is nothing I can do to help you. Oh, well, thank you anyway. Wait. You mustn't go empty-handed. What did he want? I don't know, Kuro. Who was he? You know who he was. I showed you his picture this morning. Harry Lyme. What I... did he want? I told you, I don't know. He said he had an unsigned message to call here, but he couldn't show it to me. What was he doing at the typewriter? I was suspicious. I asked him to type out what the message said so that I could show it to you. Did I do wrong? Where is it? He typed a little, then changed his mind. He said there must have been some mistake. Who did you tell him was living here? He wouldn't give me his name, so I wouldn't give him yours. Kuro, I'm worried. I think he recognized you. I only just recognized him from the way he was sitting there. I don't think he even got a good look at me, even if he did... But before, as you came up the path, he was at the window. He watched you. Perhaps he came to make sure you were here. Perhaps now the police will come. I rely on don't turn people in. Not unless he's changed from the old days. The mail has arrived, Senor Garcia. Where were you, Juan? When, Senor? Juan didn't see him. Speak for Kuro Garcia. Was that you, amigo? But I am Kuro Garcia. Have Harry Lamb followed? No, I just want to check on his movements. He came here this morning. I want to know why. See him. Not really, but that's of no importance. It's now generally believed that he did. So we can go ahead. Did anything happen, Brad? Happen? Well, I was gone. No, Mr. Lyme, nothing happened. No one came in here? No. And you didn't leave? I've been here ever since you left. That's funny. I was sure it was a trick to get me out of Madrid. What was the trick, Mr. Lyon? Well, the note telling me to go to the Villa Joselito. All I found there was a lovely young girl who'd never heard of me and couldn't imagine why I'd been asked to go there. All I got out of the trip was this rose. That's peculiar, Mr. Lyon. The waiter, he could have put the note under the door. I don't care who, Brad, but why? Why would anyone take the trouble of asking me to go to a place where I wasn't expected? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Lyon. Neither do I, Brad. Whatever the reason is, I don't like it. Stop! Oh, you have to shout like that. I always shout when I say stop. What's the matter with you tonight? Nothing. What have I done wrong? The five goes here. The six goes on top. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tired tonight. There's someone outside. The police, two of them in the courtyard. You are wrong. Harry Lyme did turn you in. He recognized you and called the police. Harry Lyme didn't turn me in. He couldn't have. But who else could have done it then? You know something? I 
I'm beginning to have an idea. understood you. And why are you following me? Because it is my duty. And this is who I am. Captain Ramirez. You don't walk like a policeman. But perhaps that's because you have such small feet. Thank you, senor. I'm in Madrid on business. Your government knows about it. And that is why I am selected to protect you. There is, senor, in Madrid like in every other big city in the world, what you call in English the underworld. This very morning, we were informed by a man, whom we give a little money now and then, that an order has been given out. The order being that Harry Lyme is to be killed. Who gave the order? And why? I don't know, Captain. You mean you do not choose to tell me? I mean, I don't know. Is it usual for you to be sentenced to death by the underworld and not know by whom or why? No, as a matter of fact, it happens very seldom. So seldom, I'm not convinced it's true now. Where are you going, senor? To see a man I know who'll tell me if it is true. Are you hurt, senor? No. I have men outside. They will tell us when it is safe to put our noses out. Perhaps they will even catch the man who shot at you. Thank you. Not that he matters. It is the man who ordered him to. Now do you care to tell me who it is? I told you I don't know. If that is true, senor... It is true. It puts me in a very difficult position. I'm very sorry, Captain. But I don't understand. All I want is a simple explanation. Lo siento, senor, pero no hablo inglés. There was nothing whatever wrong with Suite 44. Why have we been moved from that suite to this without so much as a buy or leave? Lo siento mucho, senor, pero Whatever no it is hablo... you're talking about, I can't understand you. Now, he doesn't speak English, Brad. Then why doesn't he say so? The luggage, in there. Only... Si, senor. He understood that perfectly well. Yeah, it was the Olay that did it, Brad. Mr. Lyon, we've been moved to this suite, and I can't find anybody to tell me why. It was my doing, senor. Oh, this is Captain Ramirez of the Madrid Police. This is my associate, Mr. Brapplebert. Senor. How do you do? Why, Mr. Lyon? It seems someone's trying to kill me, Brad. Kill you? How? Someone took a couple of shots at me a while ago. Shots? Who? I don't know. But the man got away. But I thought it would be safer if Senor Lyme were moved secretly to another hotel suite. Secretly? But the bellboy knows. Oh, yes. But he is my sister-in-law's cousin. But who could be wanting to kill you, Mr. Lyme? And why? I've no idea, Brad. But I'm going to try to find out. By calling on an old acquaintance of mine, alone. Tell me who the friend is, and I will see him instead. With ten police officers. Sorry. There is only one way you can walk through this door, senor. And that is with me. You can't hold me here. I've committed no crime. I can arrest you, and if I must, I will. On what charge? One moment. Senor Lyme, I arrest you for obstructing a police officer, namely myself, from performing his duty, namely to protect you. I'm now going back to my headquarters. Mr. Lyme is not to leave here under any circumstances. Si, senor. Well, that's just fine. But wait a minute. There's no reason why you shouldn't leave, Brad. And you're going to. You're going to visit my old acquaintance. His name is Luis Mendoza. He lives at this address. It's a kind of garage. At least it's supposed to be. Yes, Mr. Lyme. Supposed to be? Who is Luis Mendoza? He's Arturo Mendoza's brother. And who is Arturo Mendoza? He's one of the world's last surviving mystery men, Brad. Very few people know who he is, what he looks like, where he lives. But what does he do? He's responsible for about 75% of the organized crime in Europe. And his brother, Luis? No, he just operates in Spain. 
Mr. Lyon, is it absolutely necessary for me to go to see him? Yeah, absolutely, Brad. <laughs> but, Mr. Lyon... Anybody here? Holly? Oh, oh no. Good afternoon. I would like to see Mr. Lewis Mendoza. What about? You are Mr. Lewis Mendoza? Yes. What do you want to see me about? I'm Bradford Webster, Mr. Lyons' associate. He sent me here to see you. It seems that somebody is trying to kill him, and he would greatly appreciate it if you could possibly tell him who. What? Someone is trying to kill Harry? But why? What has he done? Absolutely nothing, I assure you. Uh, cognac and glasses. I'm very sorry to hear this. Please, senor, sit down. Any friend of Harry's is a friend of mine. What are these doing here? This is a shipment from Harry Lime Export Import Incorporated sent from New York to Barcelona two months ago. Except that it never got there. $38,000 worth of diamond cutting tools hijacked from a truck somewhere in... I'm happy to see that they're in safe hands. Very safe hands, senor. I was extremely worried about them. Tell me, uh, where is Harry now? In his hotel suite. What suite is he in? 44. Uh, 61. We moved. Ah, cognac. No, thank you. In Spain, senor, a man drinks with his friend. Or he has no friend. To Harry Lyme. Harry Lyme. Ole. Hello, Brad. Did you see Mendoza? Yes, Mr. Lyme. What happened to your voice? They made me drink cognac. I can't hear a word you're saying. Try some water. Oh, that's gin, Brad. Try the other. How can you talk? I went to see Mr. Mendoza, Mr. <clears throat> he seemed quite pleasant. He said he was sorry that your life was in danger and he tried to find out what was behind it and let you know. Get down, Brad! Did you see to anybody? I saw a man on the roof opposite just before he fired. Would you know the men again? No, it was too far away. How did they know? Did you tell anyone what suite you were now in? No, no one. I would like to speak to Mr. Lyme for a moment. Alone. You mind? All right, Brad, what is it? Your friend Mr. Mendoza asked for the number of your suite so he could get in touch with you. I told him. Mendoza, that doesn't make sense. What reason would he have to want me dead? Was anyone with him? Two men with pistols, a young man and a girl. All Spanish from the look of them. A girl, what did she look like? Dark hair. All Spanish women look alike. All I can remember is that she was wearing an emerald necklace worth at least $4,000. Well, so it was the girl at the Villa Rosalito. And that's where I have to go, Brad, if I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Captain Ramirez won't let you out. Brad, I want you to go to your room and make a phone call to me here. And let the phone ring until somebody answers it. Somebody? Won't you be here? Well, if it works, I won't be. Yes, Mr. Lyon. <laughs>
in here. If you come quickly, please. Something the matter with your friend. He locked himself in the bedroom and he won't come out. He's banging the door. Hello, Harry. We've been waiting for you, Harry. Your hotel doorman telephoned me. All right, Luis, what's this all about? This is the man who came here yesterday? No question about it? No question. It was he. It was he? Of course I was here. Look, senor. That's where the man you betrayed died, senor. That stain is the blood of Arturo Mendoza. My brother, Harry. What was he doing here? Who killed him? He lived here, Harry. He lived here for ten years, safe from the police, under the name of Curo Garcia. You heard about this. You came here to see if it was true. Yesterday you saw him, and then you informed the police. This much we know. What we don't know is, why did you do it, Harry? Who cares why? Let's just get it over with. Arturo Mendoza was the man dressed as a gardener who brought you the roses. You know he was. Did you bring the note telling you to come here, senor? The one you wrote to yourself to give you an excuse to come to the Villa Joselito? Yes, I brought it. I didn't write it. But I'm beginning to figure out who did. Can't you see he's just stalling for time? Are you reluctant to kill a man because he was once your friend? Very well. I'll do it for you. Kill him! Get it over with! Do it to hand! Give me that! I give the orders here, not her! I wonder why they're both so anxious to see me dead. What, what really happened? Arturo Mendoza was no longer a young man. Could it be that they wanted each other? Don't be ridiculous. You can't walk out on a man like Arturo, can you, senorita? Juan is nothing to me. I loved Arturo. And you couldn't turn him over to the police. His brother would have gotten you for that. When you read I was in Madrid, you brought me out here so that I could see Arturo. Then you called the police and you told Luis it must have been me. That's not true, Luis. He's lying. If you do not mean to turn in my brother, Harry, why did you pretend not to recognize him? Oh, that's easy. I couldn't have recognized him even if I'd wanted to. That's where you made the mistake, senorita. Arturo knew me years ago, but I never knew him. That's not true. He told me he used to meet you in a cellar in Vienna. Yes, he did. Three or four times. But even in those days, Arturo was eager not to be recognized. The cellar was always dark. Someone always shone a flashlight in my eyes. I've never seen Arturo's face in my life, senorita. It's only his word against hers. Exactly. But then you know, Luis, that I'm telling the truth. Harry is telling the truth. For the last time, where did he go? For the last time, my name is Bradford Webster. I'm the treasurer of Harry Lyman Incorporated. My social security number is 56805632. And Mr. Lyman, are you all right? Fine, thank you, Brad. Did you? Yes. Well, if you check with your underworld contacts, you'll find that the order for my execution has been cancelled. I'm delighted to hear it. But why was the order issued in the first place? Well, let's just say that a friend of mine thought I'd done something I hadn't. A friend? Come in. Mr. Lyme, our shipment of diamond cutting tools, that was high. That's what I said, Brad, a friend. Ole. Si, senor. Where would you like? Uh, just over there, please. 